300,000 kills. That's how many the number one Revenant and number one Newcastle have combined in Apex. And today, they're here to share with you their gameplay, stats, tips and tricks, and biggest secrets for their legends. Let's do it. And here they are, Revengeful, the number one Revenant on all platforms with that insane amount of kills, and Levels, the number one Newcastle on PC. Let's go get their biggest tips and tricks and secrets to play in their legends. First up, let's have a look at the number one Revenant in the world, Revengeful. He has 190,000 plus kills on Revenant. And I will show you all of his stats from the insane amount of games he has played to his crazy KD, biggest ever win streak and everything. But first, let's talk to him about Revenant. All right, so with uh, the new perk system coming into Apex, Rev's perks, which way do you think is the best to level them? All right, so the first one, I usually go with the ultimate cooldown. I usually go with that. And then after that, I usually go for the Shadow Pounce reset, cooldown reset on that. Are there any reasons why you choose those two? Are they just always like much more powerful than the, than the other choices or? Yeah, yeah. Like they they nerfed Rev, but I mean, his art is still like one of the best arts in the game, you know? What do you think about Rev's nerfs? Do you think they made a massive impact to him or do you think he's still the really strong legend? Uh, I, I think he's still really strong to be honest. The main thing is just that you can't really jump around as much. So you just gotta be like smarter with your attack. You can't just like waste it, you know? Do you still see him being strong for the current meta? At least for ranked meta anyway. I still see him around a lot. Do you think he's still meta for ranked? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know, ranked, you, you, I feel like in ranked, it's just a, a lot of third parties. So, you know, having movement is really good. And then, like I said, it's, it's all, it's just crazy. Been running like Rev, Newcastle and Bang. And that's like, it's crazy. It's a really good combo. Why, why that combo? Why, uh, why Newcastle? How does, does he work really well with Rev somehow or? Yeah, you know, like me and Newcastle, we're both tanks, you know, he has Fortify, Rev has all, and then his res is also broken, you know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Well, actually, another question I have written down, I was going to ask later, but I'll ask it now, is um, what are the best legends to, you know, combo with Rev? So I was thinking like Conduit is like one of the best legends to combo with Rev. You don't do that much or? Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of it's still good, yeah. They did nerf her. Sally, you know, but I mean, she's still not bad, but I like having things on my team, Newcastle. I like, I like supports, bro. Like Gibby, Newcastle, Lifeline, yeah, any of those supports and then bang. Talking about Rev, what do you think are the best weapons to run on Rev now? Especially since basically all SMGs have been pretty big nerfed. Do you, what do you run on Rev personally? Oh, oh, that's the hat for the Havoc is so broken this season. The Havoc, like, I don't run the SMGs. I run, like, Havoc, Hemlock. That's that's probably the best combo in the game. Havoc, Hemlock right there. I like that. I like the Nemesis a lot. The Flatline. I run, like, the Flatline or Havoc instead of the SMG for close range. Yeah, I find that. Do you think that Rev's more suited towards SMGs, though? Is it just that SMGs are bad and the other guns are really strong right now that people don't use SMGs much? Yeah, like... It's just, I feel like it's just kind of risky using SMGs, you know? Like, it's hard to one clip. It's just much easier to just, like, spray at someone up close with, like, a Havoc or something. Yeah, that's very true. Would you say the same for shotguns then? It's just a little bit too much. It's too risky to use them in comparison? Yeah. The RE, the RE45 is slept on. Actually, really. Really? Like so I RE. always have this conversation with almost everyone I ever talk to. I personally hate the RE45. I think it's terrible, but almost everyone else disagrees with me and they love it. No, really? no way. Do you love yeah, it? Yeah, the RE, yeah. Like, the straight speed is better than SMGs. Yeah, it's a, it's a pistol. And then, uh, hammer points. Hammer points on it is the same. I just, I, I love the RE. I mean, the fact that it takes a um, takes a digi threat as well at the moment is super strong as well. One of the only weapons yeah, it does. That, yeah, yeah, that too, that too, for sure, yeah. Now, quickly, before our number one Revenant gives us his top tips and tricks for Revenant to make you a better player instantly, let's have a look at his stats. He has 70,000 games played overall. That is a crazy amount. 11,000 wins, so he wins about one in seven games, not terrible. 
He has 217,000 kills in total. More than we will probably ever have in Apex. He's got a 4 KD, 800 average damage, which is pretty decent. 190,000 of those kills are on Revenant. Absolutely crazy to think about. He has almost 50,000 damage on Revenant. A lot of cool looking Pred badges as well, not gonna lie. Uh, his highest ever kills is 38, which is ridiculously high, but the one next to that is the most impressive one to me. 28 longest win streak. That is actually absurd. What the hell? Then we take a look at this season. He has 2k games played, 200 wins, uh, about 5,500 kills. His ADR and average kills isn't that high, but that's because he's been pred grinding this split and is currently in pred. Highest kills is 20. Absolutely insane. That is so many kills and so many games played. Holy moly. Before he gives us his biggest tips and tricks for Reb, make sure you go drop him a follow on all his socials. He streams daily, puts out banger YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff. Are, are there any uh, are there any buffs or nerfs that you'd like to see given to Reb? I've been, yeah, I've been experimenting with uh, his perk. It's the, uh, which one? Murder Machine. I've been experimenting buying that perk. So basically after... You kill a four squad, you were a team or whatever. You were your team or whatever. After you kill a four squad, he does like a little like a voice uh call out or whatever and he says like how many squads in is in the area. So I've been buying that for rank lately and it's yeah, like yeah, it helps with our parties, but I kinda wish it would tell me like exactly how many squads, because sometimes it would say like multiple or yeah, maybe if they're like pinged where they're at or something, that would be cool. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. Um, where would you rank uh, Revenant currently on like a tier list? If you had a tier list, where would you rank him at the moment? I'm gonna say like B minus or like C plus. You know? Okay, yeah, I fair. Really, I, I personally would have had him a little bit higher. Do you think the nerfs hit him that hard? I, I think before the nerfs, he would have been like an A tier maybe. But after the nerfs, you think he's more down there? Or what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I feel like, you know, like, yeah, he's a fridge character and, you know, he does, yeah, he doesn't have his tech as often now, like, you know, it's kind of rough sometimes, so, yeah, he's gotta be smart with it, like, you really can't waste it, it's actually kind of crazy, like, those, yeah, like, five seconds is low-key a lot of time, like, a lot can happen on five times. Hey, um, so with Revenant as well, what do you think is the best playstyle to play as Revenant? Oh. Um, definitely aggressive, you know. That's why I really love the Shadow Pounce cooldown reset on knock. The that uh Grim Leaper perk. I really like that one because usually, you know, I buy that one and if there's someone low, I'm gonna jump on them, get the knock, and then jump out. Yeah, it's super strong. And then on top of that as well, you have your ult as well. So if they do damage to you while you're knocking that person, you get seventy five HP back instantly as well. Rev is super strong. Right. Okay, most important question. Out of reference to heirlooms though, which one's better? I'm gonna say the death grip. That's the newer one. Newer one? Okay, I vibe that, I vibe that. Yeah, yeah. Got like more design to it and stuff. Okay, kind of an interesting question here as well. Old Revenant, before he got reworked, did you like him back then or did you not really like, like him, I guess? What are your thoughts on how he's changed since then? Is he better legend now? Uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely better now, definitely. Uh, I did like him back then. He was pretty fun, but you know, it's like him having such a big hitbox and not having movement. That was like the toughest part. And then, yeah, yeah. And then the totem was literally just like a gamble. You know, it was just risky. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree completely. What are the biggest counters to Revenant, or if there are any counters? Mm, counters. Uh, I guess maybe like alternator with disruptors. That works really good against Rev. Oh. I by the way, question, does Disruptor Rounds work against your ultimate? Yeah, they do. They do? Oh, okay, that's really good. Okay. Yeah, so the alternator and then just playing against a rev. Usually most revs are just kind of dumb. Like they pop their all and they just get like mad aggressive. So it's kind of, so yeah, like sometimes it's easy to just kind of, you know, just wait. Yeah, just wait for him to mess up. Like he's going to jump on you and just controller brain <laughs> yep. you know? I feel that. <laughs> would you say rev's more of a controller legend than a mouse and keyboard legend yeah controller because you know up close you're, you're yeah you're usually finding people up close jumping on them okay yeah i think this is the last question but the most important question if you had to give your three biggest tips for revenant to to a player what would they be in gunfights 
in the beginning, you don't want to always pop your alt right away because when you do that, they're just gonna focus you. You know, so you you don't want to just pop your alt and jump in like straight away. You know, teams are just gonna focus you. Just expect it. Uh, the second is uh. Wait, so with that, so with that, by the way, just to, just to expand on that, so would you look to like take peak damage or to, you know, to you know, get peak damage first and then play off damage like that with your ult? So kind of like how you'd normally play a fight, but you can be a lot more confident, a lot more aggressive after you've got the advantage. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. If you could get it like a crack first, a crack first, yeah. Uh, my second is, like I said earlier, just kind of realizing that like he is a big character, you know, like his hitbox is pretty big. Out of all the skirmishers, I'm pretty sure he has the biggest. And then uh, third is just not getting over aggressive, you know, like now with this nerf, you don't have your cooldown nearly as much, you know, you don't have it short it when you pop your alt. And then if you don't fight a perk, you know, you don't get it back after getting a knock in your alt. So you, you know, you just got to kind of calm down sometimes. You want to, you don't want to play like too aggressive on Rev. Yeah. yeah, no, I completely agree with that 100%. Lastly, here is controller settings you can see on screen. He plays 4-3 linear, uh, and there is button layout and everything as well. Now, we have the number one new castle on all of PC. He has almost 65,000 kills on him. Absolutely insane. So let's go find out his biggest tips, tricks, secrets, playstyles, and everything else. Also, here is socials. Go follow him. With the new perk system coming into Apex, Newcastle wise, what do you think are the best perks to pick for Newcastle? And what? Uh, I personally think it's the 250 health on the shields and the 75% of res, mainly because if you're, you know, an experienced Newcastle, you're going to be using that shield a lot in fights and you're going to need all the health you can get. Otherwise, you'll get caught out in, you know, out in the open, the shield's gone and you're done for. And you always go for those? You don't ever, you don't ever choose the other, the other choices? Uh, no, mainly the, the speed one is quite rough. Um, a lot of the time it ends up fucking you over more than anything. <laughs> that it just goes too quick. Uh, you, you, you're about to make a push, you push it forward and before you know it, you're having to try and sp uh, sprint up to it and you just get beamed trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. The, if you're more of a defensive player though, there's two different completely sort of play styles, but if you're more defensive and you're holding down buildings, then obviously if you're that type of player, go for the... Uh, the second ult on the perk system. Yeah, well, that was actually going to be my next question. When it comes to Newcastle, like, what do you think is the the best playstyle to have for him? Does he have a certain playstyle you have to have, or can you play, you know, aggressive and defensive? What are your thoughts? In my opinion, with Newcastle, um, I think he's played best aggressively. To be honest, I when I see other Newcastles playing defensively, uh, they usually get overwhelmed. They can't hold the buildings down, or etc. I think Newcastle is up there with the other legends if you can play him aggressively, use his ult to, play, to gain height, to push up, nice. use his Q to make pushes on teams and using his Q in fights, etc. Oh, I, I, I think he becomes, unless it's a, more of a ranked end zone situation, he's quite useless defensively, sort of, till those ends uh ends yeah no i agree completely like the way i see newcastle is like defensive wise he's like one of the few legends that can make any area playable like an end zone for example if it's out in the open you can make cover but otherwise if you're wanting to play defensive but well, if you want to play apex in a defensive play style normally you're not going to be picking him you're going to be picking someone else like i don't know caustic or someone whatnot like i think you like one of the major strengths with newcastle is like the ability to like take angles out in the open that other legends wouldn't be able to take because you have like your tactical especially. Yeah, and definitely when you're pushing oh, up on people, being able to take angles that a lot of other people wouldn't while like, let's say taking an angle with your ult, you can take an angle and still have the cover there. Whereas someone else would take an angle with their Q or ult and they still have to, you know, fight in the open a lot of the time if they don't, you know, reposition himself properly. Before he tells us about his biggest tips and tricks for Newcastle, his controller settings and everything else, let's have a look at his stats. As you can see, he has almost 20,000 games played with 4,000 wins. 20% win rate, not terrible at all. He has 80,000 kills in total with 65,000 of those on Newcastle. 1,000 average damage, 5 KD, which is extremely good. 
His highest ever kills is 37. That is absolutely and utterly insane. This season, you can see he has 2K games played, uh, you know, 9,000 kills, 5 KD, 900 average ADR. Got the 20 bomb as his highest. Over on his banner, you can see that his best weapons and highest rated weapons are the R99 level 120 and the PK level 117, as he does say he absolutely loves shotguns and think they are so well suited to Newcastle. Oh, and he also has 11, almost 12,000 kills with the PK. That is actually crazy. How would you rank Newcastle at the moment? Say we're talking about like a tier list of like Newcastle overall in Apex, where would you rank him? I'm quite... <laughs> Obviously, I love Newcastle <laughs> of course, of and course. I'm quite... Uh... I, I don't like many other legends, so <laughs> I would personally rank him quite high. I'd say he's, let's say, you got your top legends that are just insane. Yep. I, I put him like A. Okay, a, I just under that. S. I, I, th I think oh, if, some, if you can use him well, he is up there. But he's one of those legends that if you can't use him well, he could he might as well be like F tier. Yeah, I was I was gonna I was gonna say that literally if you didn't. I feel like he's like such a high skill gap legend. He's similar to like yeah, yeah. kind of similar to Gibraltar in the essence of if you don't know how to play the legend well, you're just throwing it by picking them. He's like it's insanely high skill. Yeah, with Gibraltar and Newcastle, they've got a lot of the same sort of play styles. You, if you don't use your kit in the right way in the right time, you can get royally done for. Yeah, exactly. And then on top of that, like you're just big chunky legends, so you just get beamed as well. Oh yeah, you're walking a uh, walking aim trainer. <laughs> Are there any changes you'd like to see in Newcastle? Would you like to see any buffs or nerfs, any of his perks or abilities? Um, in all honesty, probably not to be honest. But where if you're good enough with him, you can make him OP. But if you're not, he won't be. And if, I feel like. If, also, I don't really want people to buff him because then that means more people playing them, giving me a bit more competition, but yeah. <laughs> so you said when it comes to Newcastle, you think the best way to play him is in an aggressive way. Well, what do you think the best weapons are to play with Newcastle? Uh, if you're not one in a PK or Mastiff, then you shouldn't be on Newcastle. To be and I think it, it depends on your player style. If you're more defensive, holding angles, stuff like that, then something like a... And it depends on ranked or pubs, but... On, let's say ranked, I would run a yeah, 301 Hemlock with a PK or a Mastiff if I can't find a PK. But if I'm playing pubs, I'll be running like a Volt and a PK or something like that. So I'm a lot more close range. Also, controller I player as well. Are there any hard counters to Newcastle? I'm going to throw one out there instantly and probably say like Mad Maggie, for example. Yeah, uh, Mad Maggie can be hella annoying. Her Q mainly, her ball, not so much. I mean, the ball bounces back off the shield. It damages it, but it doesn't end up hitting you. Her Q can be very <laughs> irritating at times. Um, Crypto's Q, oh, oh technically. Um, his completely removes the electric from your wall really? and completely removes your shield. Uh, so that can be quite annoying when you just put out your Q and then you get no one. Does it break, does, well, it doesn't break the wall, Crypto's ult? It only takes away like the uh, electrified part of it? Yeah, it only takes the the electric side of it. And then if you throw in your Q out as well, that will completely like disappear in the ult. So you just gotta make sure you're in the right spot <laughs> if you ever see a Crypto. What are the best legends to play with Newcastle? Do you think there are any certain legends that pair and combo with him best? Personally, I feel Newcastle is one of those legends that can very much play with anybody. But in my opinion, I think Newcastle is best when people play with Newcastle, not the other way around. So like any, absolutely any legend can, it's the same with like Gibby, play with a Gibby on his shield, play with Newcastle on their shield you're most likely going to win that fight if you're coordinated enough. But if you expect Newcastle to play on another legend, yeah, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's trying to keep up with a Pathfinder, it's just, yeah. But I, he, I think he's overall, overall, he's good with every legend, in my opinion. Okay, important question. If Newcastle gets an heirloom, what do you think it'll be? I did hear he was meant to be getting like a sword or a shield or something, but I got scrapped, apparently. Yeah, well, I always, I've always thought it should be some form of like a morning star or like a night sword, which is quite obvious, I guess, in a way. But I feel like it should be something big because he is a hefty character and I think it'd be sick to see like a sort of rev size heirloom. Depends if he gets an heirloom at this point as well, if they're going to scrap it as well. It's, it's going to be peak. 
one of the most important questions then, if you could give three tips to anyone playing Newcastle, whether they're, you know, whether they're new or whether they're an experienced player, what would those tips be? Uh, I think my number one tip would be to use his shield to split up your fights. So if someone is more... So with Newcastle's shield, let's say you have one a little bit far back but still get shots on you and one a lot close. Place your shield down to block off the bullets from that one person and be able to take a one-on-one -on -one with the person who's more of a threat in front of you. So it's just about like separating the fights to create 1v1s for yourself. Yeah, yeah, separating your fights so you're not just constantly getting shot from every direction. Um, another one is don't be afraid to use your ult to make pushes. It's not only just to, you know, bunker down or get away or out of a situation. If, if you've got a team sort of very low and you want to push up, use that ult to get high on people. Also knocking them off as well on height. And there's Q as well. Just use it in every fight. It comes back so quick. I, th I think it's like, a I think, over, I think it's 15 seconds before it comes back. And also in a fight, it lasts a long while as well. I think it lasts like 20, 25 seconds. Use it in every fight. Would you say another tip is that I, I only really ever see like experienced Newcastle players doing this, but it kind of reminds me of like the old lifeline res shield. When you're resing someone, you can like start and stop resing them so that you can peek and unpeek in fights as well. Like using the down player to your advantage. Yeah, I, I do that a fair amount to be fair. When definitely when you are trying to bait someone into a res, just hold it on the corner. And if you see them coming, line up the uh, whatever gun you have. Most of the time it should be a PK. If you're a Newcastle close range, uh, line up the shot for them to walk straight into. And you, you basically just, it's a free peak without peaking. <laughs> okay, well, what about, uh, what about you? Why did you get into Newcastle? Why did you choose Newcastle to grant? Well, it's not probably the same than it, what other people would have as a, why they made theirs. But basically I came to the game in se late season 14, start of season 15. And I was trying to play like Horizon, Wraith and etc. I was quite aggressive from Call of Duty. And I just didn't know who to main um so i was playing with my girlfriend at the time she said why do you main newcastle because she wanted me to main newcastle because i just kept pushing everything and dying she thought oh put him on a fat legend maybe he won't you know push as much uh and i ended up turning around and be like actually i've got a shield now that i can push with so uh, it's even me. better <laughs> and then yeah i kind of just stuck with newcastle after about 5k on him i realized how op he could be and i just wanted to master him and carry on and now i'm 65k <laughs> i mean yeah you've definitely been doing that uh, do you have any do you have any more goals for newcastle in the future do you want to get into 100k or do you want to you know grant grant or what are your goals for the future when it comes to like newcastle i would love to try and hit bread with them because at the moment, I've, I've hit Masters, I've soloed from Bronze to Masters of the Newcastle. I would love to do up to Preds and sort of shine a bit more light on him in ranked. Um, I want to hit, I do, would like to hit 100k, but I feel at this moment of time, with work and passion for getting another 40, 40 something k kills, it, it will come in time, but it won't be anytime soon. Not like how I've grinded recently. But yeah, I just wanted to shine some light on him. Yeah, no, you definitely are. It's awesome. And lastly, here are his controller settings in case you want to, you know, see what they're like. 4, 3, linear, as you can see. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Keep being amazing. Keep being awesome. You're cool as hell.